Hello everyone, I'm attorney Joe Pometto and this is Attorney Audits Agitators. Thank you for joining me today of, for a special episode. Today we're going to talk about my book. My book is called Sovereign Citizens, Deconstructing, Decoding, and Deflating the World's Most Notorious Anti-Government Movement. Now, within the book, and if you like what you see in this episode and what you've heard about the book, there is a link in the description below. Um, but in the book, I included a number of images. There are 10 images in total. There's one for each chapter and there is also one for the cover and what I want to do today is talk about the meaning behind each of the images just to give you guys a greater understanding of the sovereign citizen movement and also a greater understanding of the book itself maybe whet your appetite for the book make you interested in it but we're all gonna learn a little something here today I believe so uh, before we begin raise your cup your glass in the air it tastes better when we sip together the same time sip cheers today i got some diet pepsi and some of my fans will enjoy this penguins cup cheers okay delicious this image here is on the cover and you can see there's five images and let's start with the one in the middle so the one in the middle is the mysterious sovereign citizen now i chose i didn't draw these illustrations but i designed them I chose an individual in a trench coat and a hat because I think that adds an air of mystery. And correct me if I'm wrong, but sovereign citizens, especially to people who aren't familiar with them, there is an air of mystery about them. Perhaps that's why we're interested in them because we wonder why do they believe these things that they believe? I mean, we know they're goons, okay? But there's also something interesting about them. So that's why I chose to have this guy in a trench coat and a hat. Now, if you look at his face, he's got dollar signs for eyes. And that goes to show one of the primary motivations of sovereign citizens is often to make money or to scam people. And I wanted to symbolize that in the image. And then the tie has an American flag. Now, it's kind of cool. It was supposed to be more of a distorted American flag because, in my opinion, they distort the idea of America and the principles of America and the Constitution. They they believe in some other fictional America, so they believe that they're patriotic when really they are anti-patriotic in my opinion. So that's the symbolism of the guy on the cover, the mysterious sovereign citizen. Now, if you go up to the top left, you will see the straw man. Many of you probably already know what the straw man is, but what sovereign citizens believe is that when you are born, the United States government, which is fake and illegitimate, a United States corporation, they set up a fictional version of you. This is what sovereign citizens believe. This fictional version of you lives only in paper, only in records. This is your name. So if your name is John Smith, okay, this John Smith exists only in paper. It's this fake person, this straw man who gets a social security card, who gets a birth certificate, and which all your financial records are kept in. The sovereigns also believe that there's a mysterious bank account for this person that is held by the United States government and owed to foreign governments. But the straw man theory is one of the strongest parts of the sovereign citizen theory. That's why they claim that they, they are not necessarily, say the guy's name, John Smith, they'll say, I'm not John Smith. I'm the I'm John from the family of Smith. They try to draw a distinction between the actual person and the straw man. And what they argue is that the laws only apply to the straw man. So the laws of the United States and the state only apply to that straw man and not to themselves. Therefore, they don't have to follow the law or follow the rules. That's the principle behind the straw man and that image. 
Go below the straw man. You'll see three. You'll see three flags crossed out. We all know those flags, okay? You got the United Kingdom, United States of America, and Canada. That's because the sovereign citizen. There are sovereign citizens in all three of these countries, all with different theories. But each one of them is anti-government at its core. They believe that the current government is illegitimate, and that's what those symbols stand for. Jump over to the right, and you will see we the people torn in half. That's the Declaration of Independence torn in half. Or wait, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I got the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution in here. Boy, you guys are going to kill me for this one. Um, no, this is, this is, yeah, this is the, the Declaration of Independence. I was just making sure. This is my artist rendition of it, but some sovereign theories rely on the Declaration of Independence. But again, they say that it's a more important document than it is. And in their dismantling of the United States government, you might as well tear the actual Declaration of Independence in half. And then above that image is an image of a man with a gun. And that is because if you read the book, and many of you already know this, sovereign citizens can be violent. They have killed police officers on multiple occasions. So they are dangerous. All right, let's look at the next image. Okay, so this is the image for chapter one of the book. And you can see here, it says, what is a sovereign citizen? Um, chapter one is who, what, where, and why of sovereign citizens. And I chose this image. You can see there's four different people. You got a, you got two men, you got a, uh, um, three men, I'm sorry, three men, a woman, two white men, one black man, one white woman. All I'm trying to say here is sovereign citizens comes in all shapes, sizes, colors. There's female, there are male ones. And, uh, some of the common language they use, I do not consent. The United States is a corporation. I have the right to travel name and badge number. This is some of the nonsense that they spit out. And uh, the first chapter explores pretty much what is a sovereign citizen. And you can see I dispersed those images, the anti-country uh, images within that image. Okay. And this is chapter two. Chapter two is titled Seminal Fake Theories Underlying the Movement. So all of these sovereign citizens, they, um, they all rely on there's, there's multiple different conspiracy theories, and sometimes they fuse, and some of them only rely on one, some of them only rely on another. This chapter explores some of the key the key conspiracy theories that they have. These are the most crucial ones. These are the ones that seem to run through all strains of sovereign citizens. So you can see in the top left, I have the straw man. Over to the right, you have USA Incorporated because one theory argues the United States is a corporation. Below that, you see some language from the 14th Amendment because many sovereign citizens believe that the 14th Amendment uh, changed this country, made two classes of citizens, 14th Amendment citizens and non-14th Amendment citizens. And non-14th Amendment citizens don't have to follow the laws. That's one of their key conspiracy theories. And then over to the left of that is the Uniform Commercial Code, another uh, legal document, legal uh uh, writings, laws, statutes that they rely on for their conspiracies. And there in the middle, um, I have the uh, <laughs> the triangle. It's sort of the, the sign of the, um, it's on the dollar bill. And it's also used by the Freemasons, a common sign used to signal conspiracy theories. So that is chapter two. Here in chapter three, we go into detail about some of the the conspiracy theories that are not central to the movement, but do exist. You can see on the far left, I have a man there. He's a Moorish sovereign citizen with the feds on, um, which is the hat that they wear. The Moorish sovereign citizen are their own brand of sovereign citizen. They have their own theories that's covered in this chapter. Behind that, you can see the Articles of Confederation. There are sovereign citizens who argue the Articles of Confederation are still in effect. That signalize, that image symbolizes that theory. Then right next to that, you see the two men shaking hands. A lot of sovereign citizen theory revolves around the contractual and voluntary, um, voluntary basis of agreements. 
okay? And that's what the handshake there shows. Can I shake my own hand? Look at that. How's that, guys? How's that? Um, but that is what that sh that symbolizes the the contractual that sovereigns believe everything is contractual. Okay, and I go into detail about why they believe that in this chapter. And then below, you will see uh, one of the fake license plates that they use. Free man, free man on the land is the movement within the UK that is similar to the sovereign citizen movement, but that also symbolizes the right to travel, which is covered extensively in this book. Okay, so this is uh, the next chapter, and this chapter is called Features of a Sovereign Citizen's Playbook. And this is where I actually cover in more detail um, the right to travel. I really break it down be, just because it's so popularly used. You can see here, there's a guy in a car. He says, I have the right to drive without a license. He's got a piece of paper, which is his, his the stuff that he printed off the internet where he learned his sovereign citizen BS. And then you got two officers. Here we go again, get ready to break this window. Now, I don't, I, I kind of wanted a little different expressions on the officer's face here, but this is what my audit, my uh, <laughs> illustrator my artist came up with it is still humorous i think what do you think um all right and this is chapter five a sovereign citizens toolkit so the prior chapter goes into um certain feet certain air issues of law that the sovereign citizens constantly argue. And then this chapter number five goes into the exact words, okay, and some of the other um, mechanisms that they use in order to try to get their way. And you can see here, you got a sovereign citizen in the courtroom, his attorney or the public defender is next to him. And then you got the judge who is shocked when he says, this court has no jurisdiction over me. So when they're in the courtroom, they use certain tactics, right? Uh, some of them won't won't walk into the well of the courtroom because they believe it gives the court jurisdiction. Some of them won't walk up to the lectern because they believe it gives the court jurisdiction. Some of them will only indirectly address a judge because it gives them jurisdiction. So this chapter goes into some of those tools and tactics that they use. Tactics might have been a better name for that chapter. Okay, this is chapter six, the psychology of sovereign citizens. I am no psychologist, but I attempt to be one in this article. I have fun. It's all speculation. Um, but I go into what I believe motivates some of these sovereign citizens and the four types of sovereign citizens, in my opinion, that are out there and exist. You can see here, I thought this would be humorous. Uh, you go to sovereign citizen who's seeing a therapist and he's saying, the judge sent me to jail. So I sent him an invoice for a hundred dollars. If he doesn't pay it, I will issue an arrest warrant and the sheriff will help me to serve it. And the therapist is thinking to herself, wow, this is going to be more difficult than I thought. Imagine being a therapist or psychiatrist for a sovereign citizen. Woo, woo. They got their work cut out for them. Um, I like the guy on the couch. Again, I don't think the face of the therapist really matches what I wanted. I wanted more of a like rolling the eyes or, oh my gosh, what's going to happen type of face. But I'm still very happy with the illustrations. Okay, so chapter seven, sovereign citizens as criminals, miscreants, and terrorists. So uh, I called this, this image here is called sovereign criminals. And on the left, you can see the gun because they can be violent, they can be dangerous, they kill people. Um, that's a form of terrorism. Then down below, you can see them in jail. A lot of them end up in jail through their financial schemes. And then up to the top, you see them uh, with, you see the pile of money because they, they run these schemes using money. And the terrorist part also refers to paper terrorism. That's mainly what I'm referring to is the paper terror terrorism that sovereign citizens use and commit. And of course, the scales of justice in the middle because sovereign citizens abuse justice. And I go into all these issues in this chapter. I list specific examples of crimes, murders, paper terrorism that sovereign citizens have committed and, uh, and also the tactics that they use when they commit these crimes. So it's a good chapter right there. Okay, my next chapter, tips for lawyers, judges, and police. Um, this chapter is self-explanatory. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. It's called a practical, the chapter itself is called a practical guide to dealing with sovereign citizens. And here, 
Uh, you got a lawyer on the left, a judge on the bottom, and police on the right, because these are the three uh, professions that come into contact the most with sovereign citizens. Um, they're always giving these the everybody in the law a really hard time. And in this chapter, there's practical tips for lawyers, for judges. Those are written by me. And then tips from a police officer written by a former police chief, Brian Tuttle, who is a huge contributor to this. Um, so this could be very useful for officers. And then the final chapter is No Country for Sovereign Citizens. Uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's called The Future of the Movement, No Country for Sovereign Citizens. And in this chapter, I talk about where I think the movement is headed, whether I think it's growing and what its future is. I do believe it's growing. I do believe there are more sovereign citizens than ever. But uh, I hope that the law and the country becomes aware of them, takes a hard line against them because it can be a very destructive uh, destructive ideology, both for the people who, who are participating in it, but also for people in the law and then the victims of their crimes. So, um, you know, you got here three police officers. There's a sunlight in the road in the back. They're standing in the way of these sovereign citizens doing their job honorably and nobly and doing it well. Um, so, you know, that that's a pretty cool image right there. I really like what the illustrator did in that picture. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this walkthrough of the art in the book. Um, I had a fun time designing the art. I, of course, didn't draw it. It's all very interesting. If you buy the paperback version, these will not be in color. If you get the Kindle version, they are in color. There is a $25 um, full color um, hard copy available. Uh, if if somebody really wants it, go ahead and buy it. I wouldn't, I, I don't, not really ask. I didn't, I wasn't even going to put it for sale, but um, I, I decided to put it up because, hey, you never know. The truth of the matter is the a color version from Amazon costs a lot more to print. That's why the price is higher. So I say buy the Kindle version. You'll get all of these really nice images or buy the, the $14.99 um, physical version. You'll still have these images. They just won't be in color. So I hope you enjoyed this run through of the symbology. Um, if you like this video, if you like my content, go ahead and buy my book. Uh, the link is below. I really go into the history of the sovereign citizen movement as well. Some of the founding individuals who moved the movement forward. So uh, there's just so much good stuff in this book. I spent pretty much all of quarantine um, writing this book, designing these images. I put a lot of love into it because um, I love all of my fans, all you guys who watch. And I think we're doing some good putting this out there. So uh, thank you for tuning in to Attorney Audits Agitators. I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. Like, subscribe, comment, and share as well. Thank you.